Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas, and we are in Revelation chapter 21. Wow. Uh, we just need to get through Revelation 21, and then chapter 22 is pretty short, and you'll have studied the entire book. Can you believe it? The entire book of Revelation. That's just incredible. Uh, we decided to read and study the entire book of Revelation last year, and then, uh, you know, the world spiraled out of control, COVID hit, and we just thought maybe this isn't the best time to preach about the end of the world, so we kind of moved the sermon series over here to YouTube, and uh, have been using uh, YouTube just as a way to keep in touch and to do a Bible study, and we're, you know, just taking a little bite size here and there, going maybe... 10 minutes at a time and it's 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 amazing that we're now in the home stretch and also amazing that we're in revelation 21 right now like at this time in the world like what's going on in the world right now because when we started this it seemed the world was falling apart and now we're finishing and with what's going on in the world and the news it just seems like there's a light at the end of the tunnel and Revelation 21 is about heaven. Revelation 21 is about the light at the end of the tunnel. This, I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence. This is a great chapter. It's a chapter about heaven, what glory and heaven will be like forever and ever. So let's dive right in. Revelation 21 says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. You know, it, just today, I was talking to another uh, member of our church about what heaven would be like, what our heavenly bodies would be like. And I think, you know, as, as we get older, maybe we start thinking about this more. What is that going to be like? A new heaven, a new earth. God dwells with us. And it's no longer a, a speculation, right? It's no longer a theory. It's, we can see it. We can see God with our own eyes. We can be in his presence. We don't have to worry about dying anymore or our friends dying or our family members dying. We don't have to worry about being, being sick or worry about anybody getting sick or needing an operation. We don't have to worry about being lonely. No one's going to abandon us. No one's going to backstab us. Uh, no one's going to sin against us and I won't sin against anyone. Isn't that amazing? Like how, how much we beat ourselves up for our sin and how we can't get over our sin or get, can't get past the, the darkness in our life. And, yet, and then heaven says, it, it's gone. That, all that's gone. You know, like literally everything we worry about now as a created being will be gone. I, it'll be totally different. The Bible says here that the former things have passed away. God is going to make everything new. Like you can't imagine it. We can't imagine it because it's going to be new. You can't imagine a new thing. Something that you've never seen? John says there's no more sea. Does that mean there won't be any water in heaven? No, sea is a, it's a symbol for a chasm or, or chaos or a separation. Or sometimes it's, water is even a, uh, a symbol for sin. John says there's no more sea. There's no more chasm. There's no, there's no more separation between us and God. God lives here. God lives with us. Verse 2 says it's a new Jerusalem. Just like the old Jerusalem had uh, a temple, and then inside the temple there was the Ark of the Covenant. It was just a golden box that God's Spirit, God's presence was inside of. But now there won't be a temple. All of the earth will be God's residence. And there won't be a golden box. There will be a golden throne. And God will actually be sitting on it. You know, this vision that John has of heaven with angels surrounding it and worshiping and the 24 elders bowing down, all of that, all that glory and that majesty leaves heaven and is now with us in the earth. Revelation 21 says, 
that is going to be here, here on earth. Verse 5 says, And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have his heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. God says, I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I, I created the world, and I will be the end of the world. And this is true. God says, you can write this down, right? He says, you can write this down because it's all true and I'm going to make everything new. And then he says, hey, you ever come home from a hard day's work and had a really tall, nice, refreshing glass of water? God says, I'm going to give you water like you've never had before. (laughs) I hope you're longing for this. I really do. I hope you're longing for heaven. I know we all love it. Down here, I know we love our lives, we love our families, we love our blessings, but we have no idea how much better it's going to be in heaven. See, I think we don't long for heaven because we have it so good here, but it's going to be so much better there. And verse 7 says, this is your inheritance. Verse 7 says, the one who conquers will have this inheritance, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. You're going to be a conqueror. And and nobody can make you a conqueror, by the way. Nobody else can. Your parents can't make you a conqueror. You're not a conqueror because your grandparents went to church. Uh, You're not a conqueror because you were baptized as a little baby. To be a conqueror, to conquer sin, you have to accept the cross. You have to accept forgiveness. You have to accept the grace that Christ offers to become a conqueror. You know, as we read only a chapter or so ago, that there's no standing in heaven and debating your life with God and showing him how good you were and how he should let you into heaven. The only people who get to experience this are conquerors. He, he, what, did he, he, what did he list? He said, the, the detestable murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars go to hell. Only conquerors go to heaven. You have to accept the cross. You have to have that blood of atonement that allows you to conquer sin. God conquered sin through his son on the cross and you inherit that. You inherit that as a child of God. And to be a child of God, well, first you have to admit you're a sinner. You have to take that first step. Admit you're a sinner. Romans 3 says, all have sinned and continue to fall short of God's glory. And there's nothing wrong with that. I know in, I know in this world, we all want to present ourselves as being perfect and uh, politically correct. And we've got it all together and you're, you're, you know, you're woke and whatnot. But you know what? Just flat out admit it. Admit that you're broken. Admit that you're a sinner. That's what a church is. You walk into a church. A church is not a, a group of people who feel uh, puffed up and uh, proud of themselves. A church is a group of humble people who realize they are sinners and that they need each other and they need God in order to continue. A church is a group of people who are dependent, dependent on each other and dependent on God because we, we all admit, we all admit we're sinners. We all admit we are broken, but we gather because we believe. And that's the second requirement for a conqueror, that you believe in Jesus. Acts 4.12 says there is no salvation by anyone else. There's no other name under heaven given among people by which they must be saved. There's no Bible part two. There's no secret verse, secret book, secret chapter that you're being kept from. There's no alternate path to heaven. There's no shady deal over in the corner that says you can get in to heaven by some other way, some other religion, some other Messiah. There's only Christ. And and Christians are not uh, conceited by saying that they are the only way 
uh, or that they know the only way to, to heaven. Christians didn't make this up. Jesus did. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So this is something that God said. God said there's one path. There's one way. If you want to be a conqueror, if you want to inherit heaven, you have to believe in Jesus. And then you just confess it. You just say it out loud. Romans 10 says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's all it takes to be a conqueror. Belief and admission. If that sounds like something you still need to do, you're unsure if maybe you are a conqueror that you will inherit heaven, if you're ready, I would invite you to bow your head and pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Thank you for coming to rescue me from my life of sin. I want to live my life, the rest of my life following you. And I put my trust in you as my Lord and Savior, my shepherd, my king, my rescuer, my Messiah. Thank you for the gift. I accept your grace and eternal life. Amen. I would just invite you, if you prayed that prayer, plug in, find a local church, plug in, tell someone, have them hold you accountable and begin to learn more about what it means to follow your shepherd, follow your king, follow your Messiah, and to love him to the end of your days. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.